Yep, here we go. It's not new. So when you break up, it's not These uh, suicides are made to look like okay. such, but they're always missing certain elements. They're always missing a note or a motive. I need your help. <laughs> Audio. Yeah, that'd be awesome if I uh, hit that button, right, Fausto? <laughs> that gives us a little audio. All right, so, uh, again, my name is Radio Director Ed Rivera, and this is Film Inspiration, inspiration for everyone through the lens of a filmmaker. We've got... Nathan. What's going on, guys? Nathan, Nathan O'Miller, right? Nathan O'Miller, yeah. Cool. Nathan, so thank you so much for uh, course, yeah. having having me aboard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for having I, me. Man. I'm re I'm really tired, and I apologize because <laughs> that's why I'm like acting and sounding really goofy, everyone. Uh, hello, Maribel. Hello, Ismael and Rudy Reyes. How you doing? Uh, you're being watched in LA and Vegas, brother, as well as Tucson right now. Wow. Okay. So, What's up, guys? So, uh, everyone, we've got uh, Mr. Nathan O'Miller. O'Miller, correct? Yes. Sir. All right. Uh, filmmaker, writer, director. Nathan, talk to us a little about about who you are, and uh, eventually we're going to very quickly jump into Nathan's trailer, which you are just watching right now for Fractured. So, Nathan, okay. who are you, and how did you get to the point of writing and directing? Um, wow. Uh, originally, I didn't even want to go into writing too much. I just wanted to act, mm -hmm. and so I went at Pima, U of A, and stuff like that, just doing live theater and stuff like that, too, and then... I got, uh, unfortunately, I got, uh, I should say, uh, canned or whatever. Uh, apparently, my schedule didn't meet me at my age up with the uh, the shows or whatever. And another person had to take my role, so I was kind of down. And uh, one Saturday morning that, that week, a uh, buddy of mine calls me up, and he's like, hey, man, what are you up to? And I'm like, I am literally in the dumps. I'm eating cereal. What are you up to? <laughs> he's like, well, uh, I have, um, I'm, on, I'm on my set right now, and one of the, the main actors just walked up on set, he quit the project, yeah. and my director was saying, hey, do, I, do you know anybody? And he's like, what are you up to? You, can you come down? And I was like, out trying to get up my robe off. I was like, I'm out the door. I'm coming down. Yeah, man, I'll meet you. And then uh, that's how my, I should say, my entrance into local film here in Tucson happened. And uh, ever since then, I've tried to either connect or make friends and stuff like that, or also like-minded, like mm -hmm. surround people that, you know, support yeah. your ideas and you support theirs. And that's how it took off, and now uh, a couple of years later, and this is uh, my first directorial feature, I should say, feature directorial debut. So, so we'll go into exactly the big thing that's going to be happening tomorrow night, Nathan. So first, let's uh, keep people hooked, very yeah. much like a James Bond film, give you the action off the bat, okay? Cool. So here you go, this is the trailer for Fractured, feature film, correct? Feature film, yeah. Feature film, feature local independent film here in Tucson, Fractured. Local talent, yeah. Enjoy. These uh, suicides are made to look like such, but they're always missing certain elements. They're always missing a note or a motive. I need your help. Time's up. Everyone, what's up? Woo! Sorry, that was the uh, the trailer for the feature film Fractured. Now, um, the reason why we've got you here, Nathan, is because I had reached out to you. You said, hey, I've got this movie, and I saw that you do film inspiration. So the movie is actually going to be released. Oh, it's going to be released tomorrow. At yeah. The Loft, uh, Tuesday, it's August 1st at 9.30. 
Uh, you can get your tickets ahead of time either online at the Loft Cinema's website, things like Loft Cinema or Tucson.com or whatever, or you can, pretty sure there's going to be a link right here somewhere. I think Edgar's going to probably post something like that too. Yeah, all of that information, you guys, the, the link, time, date, which was tomorrow, and then also the location, the loft, the address, we'll put all of that in the body um, of the video once the video turns into a regular post. Now, Nathan, obviously the, the film is a thriller, yes. so talk to us about how that came about. Because um, yeah, I, I really liked what you were saying beforehand. Of, you wanted to make something that was going to put people on the edge of their seats. Yeah, I love, okay, that's that's my, my favorite genre is suspense. You got me on the edge of the seat, I'm, I'm, in, I'm you know, invested in these characters, the story and stuff like that, then you want to either root for some people, right? Yeah, yeah there's always good and evil, and of course that's, that's always a good focal point, but yeah. if it's suspenseful, that's also you know, you're you're kind of you're on the edge of the seat. That's the tension. So I wanted to make a film about like halfway through you're trying to figure out who this is, and at some point the audience figures out who the bad guy is and what's going on. But the characters in the film have no idea of yes. what's going on, and then you're like watching it. And you're like maybe hoping one of your favorites doesn't die um, or get killed off like George R. R. Martin style. <laughs> so so a lot of times I've seen I've seen movies where the suspense is created when the audience is in with the uh, the character in question mm. in on that secret and their secrets and no one else none of the other characters are in with it and yeah. i've also seen uh suspense films and i like to i like to work it from the other way around where basically the audience is left out just as much as all, a lot of the other characters mm -hmm. as well so how much of an art because i consider it an art to be able to play with people the way hitchcock always thought about playing with people as he wrote these scripts yeah. or well he didn't do a lot of the writing but i mean as the, the way he designed these um, and so, gratuitous nudity. Peter Leon, how you doing, brother? Oh my Gratu gosh, Peter. <laughs> gratuitous <Really>? nudity. Uh, <laughs> question mark. Yeah. And Rob Robert Linden, how you doing, brother? Um, any, no, I was just, any in, gratuitous I was just in, nudity. No, I was just in Peter's film. And I think he's making a joke. Uh, ah, okay. His film just premiered at the Loft. What was it? I think oh, last month or so. It was called. Yep. Uh, Zero point theory. Zero point theory. And uh, he's he's uh, he's he's cracking a joke right now. It's funny. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Peter, how you doing, man? Um, yeah. So I mean, I I think I consider an arts, I, uh, the the ability to put people on the edge of their seats. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the trailer for you guys as we talk over it. So what goes into being able to basically you know play with people's emotions, take them on an up, down, high, and low like a roller coaster as as the film is is progressing, yeah, and, and they can hear our voices over there. Cool. Like yeah, um, yeah uh, I would say give them a goal or who or what they're trying to find out or trying to get to in their life or something like that, and you want to either support that person or you don't want to support that person. Yeah. So I think if if and there's a couple of different characters that have a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of you know motivation for a lot of people to get there, and there's also a lot of uh, background or a lot of history with some of the characters too, that you're introduced to late, early on in the film, and um, so I guess that I guess that, that kind of gives you uh, a sense of where they're going, where they come from, and how these people know this person and stuff like that too. Talk to me about the cast. All cast, local, right? All local, yeah. All wow. local cast. Uh, we had a actually, you know, it's funny. As of I think yeah, as of today, a year ago today was the first day of auditions really yeah i was wow. i was on my facebook and i was like oh my gosh yeah a year ago today we had the first auditions and stuff and uh it was great i, I all people either we had walk-ons or we had people that i had known or worked with before that came on to an audition and stuff like that and then had table read it was awesome and it's just it was a really great great experience to work with everybody that was involved now let, let's get back to local cast and crew but let's say hellos to also mr uh, christopher prado and then also carlos camacho and Leda, so usually, Hi guys. What's usually, going on? usually a lot of a lot of these people are you know in the craft of filmmaking themselves and whatnot. Yeah. Mr. Christopher uh, Prado says, "Hey Nathan O'Meller, great job." Thanks. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm pumped because um, you don't see too many people work toward a thriller and attempt a thriller, and so I think it's really neat because thrillers are basically that they're thrill rides for I think people's emotions or at least the the really good ones that I like to see like. Silence of the Lambs, The Firm, oh, The Pelican right. Brief, Michael Clayton. Mm -hmm. I love those type of movies. So that and that's Silence of the Lambs. Oh my gosh, Anthony Hopkins. Jeez. When I love that guy. when you uh, shot me the trailer, I thought, wow, this is something that not a lot of people reach out to do. So, um, what can you tell us with regards to? Um, oh, let me see. Uh, 
Christopher, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Peter, what kind of camera did you shoot on? What did you do for music slash score? Oh, okay. Uh, camera. Uh, we use a variety actually, but uh, GoPros were for most of the chase scenes and stuff like that at night. And it was fun. It was actually I was really worried about doing you know low light with GoPro, but it actually came out really well. Uh, Canon 5D. Really, was the majority of the film we had two of those, and for the main part of the day, I think so too. And at one point, I think we used a Panasonic Luminex uh, GH2 or GH3. I think it was. How did yeah. how did that work out with the the Canon and the Panasonic? Because sometimes they'll produce different they, textures. Yeah, they yeah. actually matched up pretty well. Really, uh, most of the, the time we did that was at night. Okay. So they kind of they, they kind of matched up pretty well. I watched the test footage at the lot this morning, and it looked it looked spot on. It's great. That's neat. Yeah. That, that's interesting because you know what, like. My my Canon Rebel T six I versus the T two I even even those so are both Canon cameras yeah. and they're they're similar but you can still see the difference different and apertures so. and stuff like that and lenses and stuff like that too yeah. uh, absolutely yeah uh, I there you can notice maybe just a little bit but I think that comes from me being in that chair for like four months editing oh, it yeah. for a year and you're like yes I know which camera this one was at you know and stuff like that too but for music uh, a lot of local. Um, uh, actually, all the music was local except for one song, which I got the rights to to use. Mm -hmm. But uh, my friend and actually the main star, Bo, uh, Michael Bo Phillips, he plays Tommy Collins, who's the main actor in the film. He he's he's a jack of all trades, and when it comes to entertainment, and he has a lot of songs that are in the film. And I have a couple, uh, I would say, DJ friends of mine as well that created the score for the film as well too. It was their own music, and they yeah. created it as well. They made a couple songs specifically for Fracture as well. And, there are a few of them are up in Phoenix right now working on, either, I think it was school or jobs that they got. So maybe they'll be here tomorrow, hopefully they will be, but uh, it was great music. I was really, actually really happy that they gave me the honor to putting it in the film, because it actually turned out really great. Like from a community standpoint, it sounds like a lot of people chipped in and said, yeah, you know what, like, let me help you out with this. Yeah, yeah. it was great. I, was, I, was, I got this film and stuff like that, I've listened to some of your songs, I think it really fits. How would you feel like if I could showcase this? And they're like, oh yeah, and they would play. And actually, they make an appearance in one of the scenes as well. They're DJs in the background <laughs> with their own Which music, that's playing creative. with it. I yeah, mean, <laughs> if it's what they do. Yeah. Um, all right, fractured trailer. Here we go again, one more time. Uh, film comes out tomorrow at the Loft. Yeah. We'll give you the details on that once we come back from the trailer. These uh, suicides are made to look like such, but they're always missing certain elements. They're always missing a note or a motive. I need your help. Time's up. There you go. I always <laughs> forget how to do that. God, I am. I am. I had a long day at work. Uh, it was a good day at work, but it was a long day at work, and I'm a little Looney Tunes. That was the trailer for Fractured. Now Fractured is going to be premiering tomorrow night at the Loft Cinema. Uh, what time? Nine thirty. Nine thirty p.m. Uh, we may. I've had a couple people ask and stuff like that. But there's going to be a red carpet event. There's going to be photos before and after as well. But we might have a Q and A. You know, after the showing, if people are down to ask questions, as I know some of my castmates might be a little bit, uh, I would say, shy and stuff like that too. But there's gonna be an after party too, so there's gonna be Q and A after that maybe as well. Fausto, question. Pierre Leon wants to know what what is the running time? Running time. Uh, the running time is an hour and uh, I believe it's ten minutes. Yeah. Hour and wow. Nine, hour and ten minutes. Just made it that feature film length and stuff. It wasn't really it wasn't originally supposed to be a feature. I was trying to make more of like a shorter featurette, but then. You know, improv fighting scenes and stuff like that. And some of the scenes just kind of stretched out. Yeah, but it, it it's good. I mean, I didn't want to make something too, oh, you know, over the top and stuff like that, where people are walking and talking. They have nothing to do with the scene. You're like, why are these people talking and yeah. stuff like that too? But it, it it's good. It's got a good pace and stuff like that. I've been told. So that's that's it's it. I, I think it's a perfect perfect length. And stuff I like think that too. I think that's one of the challenges with independent filmmaking is knowing. What to cut out and what to leave in, obviously you want to leave the main stuff in, but mm -hmm. um, you know, not, you know, like for example, if a character walks toward the door, he turns the handle, he mm -hmm. goes through the door, and then he's outside, and he gets in the car, and he turns on, you know, you can literally go from the inside, and he's in the car, you get it, he traveled from point A to point B, and so, I think know. one of the number one um, 
things I've learned besides all the, the ton of stuff I've learned on this film, making my own film, which has been awesome. Been definitely a big learning experience. But one of the things I've learned about filmmaking mm -hmm. is you have to have conflict in every scene. It doesn't yeah. have to be fighting, it doesn't have to be argumentative, but there has to be conflict moving forward. The scene with people who are talking, where they're walking, and stuff like that too. And if you were walking back and forth, maybe you have a, the camera focusing on one thing, but you hear and you see people walking back and forth, and just why are we focusing on this, but there's still conflict in the background, and stuff yeah. like that too. And just making that unique every time as well, you know, to the, to the plot, which I, I don't know, that's one of the toughest things, I think. It, and it makes sense because, I mean, if you think about all the different reality TV shows out there, one time, one one in particular, I saw it was about. Um, it was called Little Women, and why do I recognize that? It's about uh, Little Women in okay. Los Angeles. Okay. I think they're in L.A. And I thought, okay, this is going to be an interesting glance into their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting for a moment, and then you realize it's it's back to the same old conflict of you know hair pulling and name calling and you know who slept with whose boyfriend and who hurt whose feelings and so goes back to conflict and so it kind of always goes back to that so I thought the premise was interesting but then I just got kind of uh, turned <laughs> off when I realized that aspect was uh, very heavy and let's say hi to uh, Stella how you doing Esther how are you AJ O'Neill what's going on brother how are you uh, being watched in Florida Greg Greg Gutierrez how are you and George George Sanchez how are you man hey guys do you guys have any questions? Because it's not just about us blabbing on and on and on, and I'm really good at that. When I have more energy, but I'm not... When I have less energy, I suck at it. Let's be honest, you guys have seen me, but... Um, do you guys have any questions with regards to filmmaking? Because you got a writer, right? Uh, yeah. R writer, director, right here of the film that, uh, for the trailer that you guys just saw, and you guys can catch it tomorrow night at The Loft at 9.30. 9.30. Fractured. You guys shoot away if you guys have any questions because, again, we want to hear also what you have to say, what you wonder, what you think about independent filmmaking, um, you know, just any aspect of filmmaking that we can join in on. So do not be shy. In the meantime, back to Fractured. Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. And enjoy the trailer. Oh, it looks like you had a question. Oh. All right. <laughs> that was quick. That that's uh that is my uncle Rudy in the LA area. When will this come to Los Angeles? Oh man, I don't know. I honestly I don't know. Uh, I got, I've been approached by two different people for distribution talks and stuff like that too. Um, it's possible it could. I have a couple people that actually were in Fracture actually live in Los Angeles and are on projects out there right now currently too. So, um, would you like to at least screen it? In Los I, I think so, maybe. Yeah. I, I, uh, more than 90%, I would say 90% of the cast and crew live here in Tucson, so maybe that might be a possibility. I, would, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just don't know how I would. Oh, man. Oh, look goodness. Good. All right. Uh, well, we've got technical difficulties here <laughs> in the studios. In the meantime, Fausto's got a question from... Christopher Prado wants to know, how long was physical photography? That's a good question. Um, we started... This idea was a, a couple of years in the making. Writing took a couple months, but we started principal production and running time the first time was in the end of June of 2016. And it ended, I would say, November of 2000. Uh, oh my gosh, I forgot what year it was. So, so, June. So, so, yeah, so uh, I would say uh, June to November of 2016. So, how many months is that? Five? Five. Five months. Okay. And we had some pickups, you know, there's always pickup shots and mm -hmm. stuff like that afterwards that we filmed in January and February that we had to work with and stuff like that too with the whole change in editing and, uh, but yeah, yeah, good question actually, yeah. I thought it was going to go a lot longer. We tried, I, I, I did the, the, the bad thing in trying to give myself an end date, which is good. You don't want to like continue this for years and years and years and years and never get anything out. I, I tried giving myself an end date to have it be, you know, finished by. I tried giving it to October. Yeah. But, you know, it with the independent films, people have lives. But not only that, you want some people want this to be their job, to act and yeah. direct and stuff like that too. But people are students, people actually have day to day jobs, so you have to, you know, juggle that sometimes. So that's that put us back a little bit I think. But 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 I mean it I think it's really important for independent filmmakers to set like to physically get a calendar mm -hmm. or at least write it down somewhere. Okay. Deadlines. I'm going to have this part done or this facet done of the film by mm -hmm. this date and this other date and so on and so forth because then you put that healthy pressure on yourself to yeah. actually be productive versus it dragging out for a few years. 
I was going to say, yeah, my assistant director, uh, Alex, she was great. She made schedules for everybody. She talked to everybody, got all of his work schedules and stuff. And, um, yeah, she kept everything pretty, you know, condensed and uh, organized, which was really great with people either, you know, living on either side. These uh, suicides are made to look like such, well, but was, um, they're always missing certain elements. I really they're always missing a note or a It looks like we went to that out like 4th Avenue. Actually, but University. Oh, okay. Yeah, right okay. at the university. Exactly. Um, a couple of different local uh, uh, Time's up. businesses uh, were actually took part in this. Uh, Tommy's Bar on Stone, which you've seen there. We shot on University. Um, headquarters Hookah Lounge, a friend of mine, Basilios, owns it, and he opened it up for both the auditions, but also for one of the scenes that took place there as okay. well, which is coincidentally where the after party is going to be taking place after the screening <laughs> or Q&A. Broadway, right? Like Broadway. Broadway right before Campbell if you're heading west. Yeah. Broadway before. Okay. Yep. And so that should be on the north side of the street, correct? North side of the street, In that yeah. like strip mall area? Right in the strip mall area, right there, right across the street from the Sonic, I think. You guys, thank you very much for the questions. Everyone else, don't be shy, or Uncle Rudy, or Christopher. Chris, if you got another, if both of you or anybody has another question, throw it out there. He's been getting some good questions in there. Thanks, bro. That's uh, what's the runtime? That's right. That was the last one. Yeah, that was the last one again. Also, do you have any questions? Uh, <laughs> sure. Wouldn't put him on the spot, man. <laughs> we got so, we got Fausto almost uh, renteria over here off to the side, and he's actually helping uh, moderate. So, Fausto. <laughs> Uh, I was going to ask, uh, me and I always talk about how we filmmakers are like masochists because, you know, it's it's a grind <laughs> to get anything done. So what got you, what, what was your motivation in filmmaking or acting or writing? In Fractured or just in general? In general. Oh, um, Other than your love for pain and suffering. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, it's an art. It's, it's an art filmmaking and not and all artists are either starving artists or painful artists they have emotions they have things they want to get out there and stuff like that too I've always ever since I was a little kid I can't think about wanting to do anything else more than acting because I love I love storytelling I love the emotions that you convey and also that you bring out of people from the roles that you play I'll watch something like that and uh, yeah I'll just I'm like it Gosh, that you know that affects me and stuff like that. I like I like you know that's interesting. I want to do that for the people. I want to inspire people to think outside the box. You know, create something and stuff like that too. You know, go out, you know, you know, love and be kind and everything like that. But go out there and you know, create something. It doesn't have to be film. It doesn't have to be music or anything like that. But just do something that's you know inspiring for you and you know inspiring for other people. And I've always loved that about film. I got a following question to that question, and yeah. it is. What did you do to prepare yourself to get yourself into the acting world and now into the writing and now into the directing? That's a good question. So, so the uh, the question was um, Fausto asked, "What did Nathan do to get ready to step into the acting and the directing world?" Sorry, acting. just 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 for those of you who might have not heard you. Uh. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Um, acting, I like I like studying. The character and stuff like that too. Um, I don't call it method too much, but I like listen to music. I will watch roles and stuff like that too. I like I like watching the great you know actors that I idolize or I admire. Anthony Hopkins, uh, Gary Oldman, yeah. uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, just to name my like one of my three, my top three right there. Um, they just they disappear. It's not them anymore, and I love that. I've always tried to you know match that intensity or match what they brought to the roles and stuff like that as well. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. Is that a tattoo? I do, yes. Uh, I got one last year. Actually, uh, my girlfriend and I got tattoos at the same time. Not the same matching ones, but it's um, it's in Latin. It's called, it's, uh, it's S, I can't even pronounce it right now. S-E quam et uh, It means to be rather than to appear. I, I believe that a good actor, you don't want to fake it. Yeah, they always say they're going to make it and stuff like that, but you really want to bring either something you know that it's somebody else's experience or something that you've experienced into your roles. And I think that honestly, I mean, maybe sometimes it doesn't work for everybody. You know, it's different for each, every, for every person. But I think that really, in my opinion, for me personally, has helped me move forward as an actor instead of just, you know, 
doing a role reading a script or something like that. It's reacting to what's going on or reacting to somebody else's facial expressions or a line and something like that too. And and I think it also depends on the type of um, the type of character you're trying to create because if it's going to be something like a um, fun, goofy, or over the top, that's very different from some somebody who's you know more along the lines of the type of characters that I've written in my films, mm -hmm. which are more in the real world, so to speak, with you know real. Um, uh, you know, just regular regular behavior and whatnot. But it's really hard to describe to the actors other than what I can sometimes consider the cheesiest of ways, which is you know don't 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 act the role, be the character, show me the character, be the person. And I know it sounds cheesy, but it's also no, really really true, true though. Yeah, it, no. you want to, and then that's that's when I've seen audience members go through this where they say, oh, that's my friend on screen. Look at him. Yeah, I grew up with him. And then if their job is done right, maybe about two minutes later, they forgot it's their friend because they got lost in the story because the story is brought about by good characters, brought about by good acting. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, at least you know, with the type of characters, that it sounds like you're uh, drawing up and the type of characters that I draw up, uh, that's the type of thing that you're trying to draw out of the actors yeah. is you know, when, when they can be and you get lost in that. Mm -hmm. That's just the best. Mm -hmm. uh, trailer? Sure. Yeah, you're there. Okay. Don't let, let's say hi to uh, Jamie Gutierrez, Consuelo, Flores, Fausto Olmos, Cassia Evelish, and Glenda Aguirre. And then Christopher Prado has a question. What was the biggest challenge in taking on so many roles? Cool. Okay. Um, um, can you clarify that a little I, bit? I think oh. what Chris is trying to say is like, being the actor, being the writer, being the director. Oh, okay. Me. Yeah. A lot of hats. Yeah, I believe it. Um, well, I didn't act. I mean, I, I have a little Hitchcock piece in there. I was thinking about it, but then I was like, wait, that's too much. You know, I don't want to take that, you know, that too much of a leap. Um, I co-wrote it with another friend of mine uh, at the time back the last year, and we kind of wrote our scene. I'd write a scene, he'd write a scene, and we'd write, we'd get together and put them together and either try to have those scenes match up or, like, sync up for the next couple scenes moving forward. So that was a cool, interesting way to write the script. It wasn't just written by me or something like that as well. The ideas came from me and my old roommate, um way back when and for this project to be like about a roommate and one of, between roommates and one of them is a serial killer the other one doesn't know it and that's how it kind of started and then it took on its whole another spin with like cops in the air in, in the area and something like that in life and then another person that's another friend and kind of like built up with characters like that probably the biggest challenge for me with all those hats probably not maybe with wearing all those hats because I had a lot of support from my cast my assistant director and stuff like that too and I also had um, my friend Steven, who was uh, the director of photography and stuff like that too, and Alex was assistant directing, and I would handle most of like the actors, making sure they were getting, pulling out what I could and stuff like that. What I was seeing, like I like that. Can you can you do something like can you see it this way or mm -hmm. something like that too? Or I would just like we would do it for a while, and then one of my favorite things would do it would be um, instead of um, instead of like saying action or something like that and people get out of it I was just like we're just going to do one for fun you know and then somehow that would just let my actors relax a little bit more and that's how I got some of the scenes that are in the movie that were better than the ones that they did before yeah. because they were just having fun with it I'm like you know we're just going to do one for fun I want you to have fun with this scene you, you, you know, help them get into that comfortable space yeah yeah. yeah. I actually learned that from um, Clint Eastwood Clint Eastwood yeah you knew that yeah. didn't you yeah the, the, the yeah. horse the, the horse, horse thing where he does this yeah. thing yeah just you know. Like so, 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 uh, so for for those of you who don't know, sorry, sorry yeah, to cut yeah. you off. So for those of you who don't know, Clint Eastwood actually does this thing, where he's on set, and he says, when you yell action, it's kind of like startling. What what that'll do? It, it, as the way he described it was the way a horse hears the bell, the doors open, the horse is startled for a moment, and then it takes off, but mostly from a place of fear first off, and then eventually they get going. Mm -hmm. When you do that to an actor, similar comparison, not to compare actors to horses. That's not what he's trying to do. That's not what we're trying to say here. <laughs> but um, I've tried this. And Fausto, maybe you can attest to this. Where I'll say, you know what? Whenever you're ready. Yeah. And then, you know, you just kind of ease into it and whatnot. And I think that it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, big difference, small difference. That's up to anybody in particular. But I think it makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, My follow-up question to Christopher's was... Uh, now that you have your, first I don't know if you did. I answer your question. I don't know if I answered. His yeah, question I, I think the okay. biggest. Yeah, he, he said yes. That's what oh, he okay. meant. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, now that you're done with your first movie, and what is it that you learn as in the process that you would do differently in your second one? 
Mm -hmm. um, that's a very good question. That's, that's, very, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, now, I have all my own equipment. So I don't have to rely on other people. I have my own camera, my own sound equipment, which I had these sound. I bought most of the equipment and have as we went along and stuff like that because I self-funded this whole thing from my daily, you know, my day-to-day -day job because I wanted to make it myself. You know, I don't have to rely on anybody else's money or producers on set of saying, you know, I want to do this. I'm like, that's not the script, you know. But I put money in. I didn't want it to deal with anything like that. Yeah. So um, I wanted to make it with friends Please. and I wanted to make it with people that I know and love and that are also in the acting industry itself. What would I do differently? Um, gosh, there's a, there's actually a lot I would do a lot different and stuff. Um, can we come back to that one? I want to think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll think. I'll, I'm gonna ponder a little <laughs> bit, and then, and then, and then I'll, I'll just like, oh, I got it, and then I'll, I'll go back to it. I'll tell you uh, what. I'll ask at the Q and A tomorrow. <laughs> you know, put him, oh, put him man. on the spot and not just oh, on Facebook no, it's actually like, no, it's live, good. Right. I, then I have a night and then the rest of the day tomorrow to think about that and uh, come back with a better answer than they're probably right now but gosh that was good Fausto okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be thinking there I like at the Q&A or either right now I'll just go oh, Fausto I got it, I got it. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Mike Clark how you doing brother thanks for jumping aboard alright uh, Fractured the trailer you can show it again yeah Yeah. okay ahead. let's go ahead and, and jump into that what we're going to do and then Chris brought up your, his great question of the uh, Biggest challenge of taking so many, uh, taking on so many roles. So mm -hmm. here we go. The trailer for the feature film Fractured premiering tomorrow night at the Lot. These uh, suicides are made to look like such, but they're always missing certain elements. They're always missing a note or a motive. I need your help. up. Oh Alright everyone, that was the trailer for the feature film Fractured, starring... Oh gosh, uh, Bo Phillips, uh, Rachel Netherton, Josh Volner, Alex Emerson, Jeremy Herrera, all so local. many more, all local, all, yeah, local. all local Tucson uh, talent, and, music and everything. And uh, uh, it will be premiering tomorrow night at the Loft. At the Loft, 9.30 on Speedway, right before Country Club if you're heading west. We've got our friend Ruben Reyes just joining. Ruben, hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing, brother? Thank you for jumping aboard. Reyes is taller, just joining. No, I think that's that, yeah. Fausto, okay. <laughs> I have your answer to your question. What would I do differently? Um, I would... Probably take a couple more editing classes because I kind of got um, addicted to it a little bit, which is cool. I actually found out I really liked editing to music and stuff like that too. Maybe music videos might be in the future if I want to get into it. But probably take a little bit more editing classes with hands on because I kind of asked a few of my colleagues what to do and stuff like that that I know in LA and my buddy Yuri in uh, Brazil, who was the director of the first film I was actually ever a part of here in Tucson. And Chris Carter out in Los Angeles, who I started in his film, Overwatch, last year um, as well. Oh, two years ago, I'm sorry. And uh, they gave me some hints and tips on editing stuff, and I kind of watched YouTube videos and stuff like that as well. But probably take some editing classes, I guess, because there's some things I would like to learn how to do to make things differently for, like, promos or anything like that as well, or, you know, videos or small clips or what to do and how to do it. Color correcting or color coding, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, see, I'm not... I'm not an editor. I, I, I edited Fractured because, you know, I had to. I was I was uh, brought to a point where I had to do it or find somebody that wanted to do it else. But I didn't want to give my project to somebody else to edit. I wanted to be there the whole time and work. It's not like I was trying to be my thing, you know, but... But you know what, though, some, sometimes some filmmakers will see it as, oh, you know, here are my burdens. But it, it sounds like you took these experiences and said, okay, these are the things that are going to make me grow. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that are going to make me expand as a filmmaker. I mean, was that kind of more of, of your way of thinking and looking at it? Because, I mean, that's like... Kind of, yeah. I, but I had a vision. I'm very... I mean, I have a slight idea memory where I can see something and I want it to be, look, something like that. And I, I didn't want to just pay somebody else to do it that might not be as invested as I am. Yeah. Or have the vision 
for this that I have, you know, and how to set up the timing for all the, everything like that. And I kind of I got addicted to it. I was like, oh, this is cool. I actually saved a lot of money by not going out. Yeah. I get off work, drive across the street to my house, and sit in the chair for about an hour, and then go and hang out with my girlfriend Rachel, uh, who plays um, um, Lily in, the, in Fractured. And then three months later, I'm like, oh my god, I saved like three grand. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. I just didn't. I didn't do anything but go home and edit. I didn't go out. I didn't really go to a movie or anything like that. I just sat at home. So maybe if you want to save money, uh, edit a film. Yeah, that's a good idea. Masochism. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a masochist. Uh, Christopher Prado has a question. Yes, that was good. Chris. Those are some good <laughs> questions, by the way. Thanks. Was there anything you look for at, or ask for in your cast and crew when making the decision to bring them aboard? I'm going to read that again one more time just to make sure I got it correct. Was there anything, anything you looked, looked for or, or asked for in your testing? Oh, it's because it's yes. prerequisites, yes. I guess. Not really prerequisites too much. I mean, of course, age is for, you know, everybody, if there's a certain, you know, college older or something like that as well. But I really want to look, I look for, I don't know, it's, it's weird to say realism, mm -hmm. like you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. I enjoy when somebody takes it and it's like they're not... Um, Man, I couldn't. I can't believe she cheated. You know, this is horrible. Why did she leave me? And something just like, I love it when people just like kind of get into it. And it's not overboard. It's not like how I term theater acting. Nothing against theater actors. It's just, you know, people know that it's on stage and it's all out and open. But more of it's like, you know, I just can't believe she cheated. She just left. It's just horrible. You know, you just got sucked. I can't move forward. I just. I'm glad I have you here. Just something like that. Just get into it and just like make it their own. Or I'll give them a tip and stuff like that too. Or if they have, I'll, I'll let them first. Well, how I do auditions because I, I was actually the uh, casting director for uh, Authentic Productions for a while, for about two years or so when um, they were doing local films and commercials and stuff. And I would let somebody who was for like a script or something like that, I'd give it to them without giving them anything, just to see what they have and what they have to bring to the table. Because I like showcasing their talent. Just that's one reason why I made Fracture to showcase friends and my talent in certain realms to move forward with their careers if they want to make it a career. But I would let them see, read it. I like I watch them. I like how you said this. Can you kind of bring that up more? Or why is he angry? I would ask them questions and like, oh, I don't know. and then they would just, if they can give me an answer just from something they have no idea about. I'm like, okay, cool. They're they're making it up as they go. They have an idea and the ability and the ability to the ability. make it up because improv. I mean, people are like, oh, improv is so amazing and stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool, but it's not as rare as people think it is and stuff like that. Or I should say as as well equipped as, as people think it is. I love it when people will have a line or something like that and they'll say it or they'll say it differently, but it still conveys the thought. So if somebody can do that in an audition, I'm already, I'm already looking at you know you as a potential candidate for the role. That's great. Yeah. Gilbert, how are you doing, man? Gilbert, how are you doing, man? Yeah, what's going on, man? Thanks, Chris. Keep them going, man. That's uh, some great questions, bro. <laughs> cool. Um, well, let's see, let's see what we're at because. I usually advocate for about well around the time that we're at right now. Oh, okay. There you um, go. But okay, so just to close out, you guys. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, or maybe something else um, we should be talking about, Fausto, before we close out? Um, you know, final information for tomorrow night. Um, um, if you haven't got your tickets, I uh, get your tickets now. You can buy them online, which is cool. Uh, the Loft does that now, just like Fandango or anything like that too, which is awesome. Um, if you want to buy them at the box office, feel free. Uh, their theater is brand new. Our movie is actually the first independent film that's going to be premiering at the new theater in the loft. They've done new construction, all new seating, all yep. new screen. The upstairs or the side one? Uh, no, uh, the, uh, uh, the, main the main one. one. The main one. The main one. Really? Really? Oh, yeah, really? they, oh. they went from 500 seats, which were great, but they were kind of old. We've been yeah. there for Rock and Horror and like that. We went from 500 to 390. Or 98 or something like that. Oh, okay. But they're all brand new. All brand new seating, all brand new surround sound, all brand new screen, which is awesome. I originally was trying to showcase this in March or May or something like that. I think it was May, actually, May. But they couldn't because of under construction, so that's why I had to push it back to August and all this other stuff that happened with it all as well. But it's going to be great. I watched it this morning. It looks beautiful. I'm so happy that it looks great. Um, I was really worried and really nervous about that, too. But it sounds great. And um, so I would show up a little bit early so you can get your seats. There's going to be, I'm going to start showing the film at 9.30, but beforehand there's going to be a meet and greet with the cast and crew. There's going to be like a red carpet event, so the cast can take pictures with their plus ones or anything like that as well. But afterwards, maybe a and a if people didn't get all the answers they wanted to ask today and ask maybe some of the uh, actors or the crew that worked on it too. I would love 
for them to take part in that. And if not, the after party is always available to people too, to the public as well. Sweet. So it's going to be a fun night. One, one more thing I like to always um, hit on to close out. Dress to impress. Sorry. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, I'm going to be right inside. Also, so, um, you know, the show being called Film Inspiration, the inspirational aspect to it. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts uh, with regards to, um, or what words of advice would you like to share with people who are saying, you know, independent film, filmmaking, or just maybe any goal or anything that they want to do in life? Um, you know, a, a guy like you, guys like Fausto, myself, we just run out and we do it. I what, think this, what would you want these to last two people? years have been huge for independent films. Mm -hmm. Winning like Green Room and stuff like that and all those other movies that have come out. What I like to say is the director of Deadpool and the most recent Star Wars Rogue One were independent directors. They had never worked with big budget and stuff like that. That can be a gambit to roll from the production side of stuff. But they want to hand a huge undertaking to maybe directors that haven't gotten that far in their careers yet, but sometimes it pays off. Yeah. So don't let anybody, I would say, discourage you from at least taking a risk. Take risks as many times in that as you want. Be confident in yourself if people that are you thought were closest to you aren't confident in yourself as well. Um, just I, just, just, just go, out, go out and create something. Go out and have fun and, you know, don't burn bridges behind you and stuff like that, but at least surround yourself with people and friends that are going to support you and you're going to support them. And that's why I made Fracture, because I wanted to showcase my friends and myself and show people what you can do as you move forward. And I'm sure the next one's going to be great, the next one's going to get better and stuff like that as well. But I think right. the inspiration that could be, yeah, exactly. Inspire people and um, you know, support local film, support local artists, because you'll be surprised what, you, what people can accomplish. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Fractured tomorrow night at the Loft in Speedway here in Tucson, Arizona, 9.30. Get there an hour beforehand. Oh, gosh. Have some food. <laughs> they've got pizza. They've got beer. Yeah. They you do guys, everyone, drinks. get there. Come on out and support Fractured tomorrow night at the Loft at 9.30 p.m. Uh, all the information, again, in the body of the description of the video. Once the video turns into a regular post, put that right there. You can find it all right there. We'll leave you guys with the uh, trailer for uh, Fractured. And whatever your dreams are, just go out and do them. Yeah. Don't over, you know, research, plan, yada, yada, yada. But ultimately, whatever your dreams are, if it's filmmaking, obviously, you know, I'm going to speak more specifically to that. But whatever your dreams are, just run out and do it. Guys, this has been... Nathan, Nathan <laughs> <laughs> I Nathan, keep thinking about that. Yeah, this, this has been Nathan Miller. My name is Edgar Ibarra, and thank you for tuning in. And uh, here we go for with uh, Fracture. See you tomorrow See you night. See you tomorrow night. Thanks. These uh, suicides are made to look like such, but. They're always missing certain elements. They're always missing a note or a motive. I need your help. Time's up.